the sword in his hand and he's riding a white horse across this land he has fire in his eyes and the sword in his hand he's riding a white horse all across this land and he's calling out to you and me Hello again, dear friends. We're continuing our study on spiritual warfare. And I read to you from um, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 12. It says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay, there, there is not the enemy. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I refer to people. It says, uh, but against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, there's where the battle lies. There's where the enemy is. Let me repeat that. Against powers, against principalities, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. Principalities are uh, angelic beings that they seem to have authority over specific areas, uh, possibly geographic areas, um, not necessarily delineated by um, cartographers uh, and uh, having uh, secure tight borders uh, like between the United States and Canada. No, but over specific areas possibly having specific issues, spiritual issues. Uh, so those are principalities and powers again are a group of uh, angelic beings that have a certain uh, authority or action over certain areas and um, so we're, we're talking about the the spiritual weapons and we promise to talk about a prayer and I wanted to bring to your attention Nehemiah the book of Nehemiah uh, I'm reading here it, it came to pass that um, the certain people in verse 3 of chapter 1 uh, they said to me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the provident, province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Okay, so this is not God speaking to uh, uh, Nehemiah. It's uh, certain people who came from the Jerusalem area, reporting to him what they had seen. But here is how the Spirit of God works. Somehow this touched Nehemiah. He, he was moved by it. And dear saints, there are certain things that may touch you and you're moved by it. It's not there to give you negative emotions or, or anything like that. It's there for a purpose. And Nehemiah seemed to understand because having heard this, uh, listen to the actions he, he took here, he said. Uh, he, uh, he said, when it came to pass, when I heard these words, the report that was brought to him, when he heard these words, that he did uh, a couple of things. Number one, I sat down. Okay, sit down now. Okay. And then he, he wept. What does it take to, to bring a, a grown man in, in a position of authority, as Nehemiah was, uh, to, to weep? But I sat down and I wept and mourned certain days. He was grieved. This thing touched him. And I asked myself, when is the last time, Roy, you grieved over anything 
for more than a minute or five or a day. He was grappling with this for, for certain days. What I'm saying here, dear saints, is there is warfare. Unless we recognize it as warfare, it's like we're, we're going out the, instead of the full armor of God, we're going out in our pajamas. We, we have a job to do. We have a responsibility. We have spiritual weapons. And these weapons need to be wielded by uh, people who have been who have been called by God and uh, their saints we have been called and so it continues here he says for, uh, and and mourned for certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven and then it includes the prayer that he prayed and it's worth looking at this prayer and uh, first of all, uh, incredible, he, he starts by worship. By that I mean he, he, he attributes to God the attributes of deity. In other words, he's, he's talking to God about himself, acknowledging, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Okay, so he's, it's, it's just incredible. When it says a, a, a great and terrible God, uh, he, he doesn't mean that God causes terrible. It means that his, his, his power is beyond human comprehension. As it says elsewhere, with, with, uh, with God nothing shall be impossible. Uh, and, and so the God who created the, the, the cosmos, the three dimensions of space and time uh, in the beginning, uh, uh, billions, uh, trillions of galaxies, each galaxy uh, having billions of stars, and each star having um, planets or things orbiting the stars, it's just beyond comprehension. Uh, we can't number it exactly what the Bible says, that you cannot even number that God knows them all by name. Not by number, by name. This is indeed a God not to be trifled with. And He, He is the one who has ordained that we as human beings uh, redeem through the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, and then filled with the third person of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit has infilled us. We've been uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit as much as Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan, that's a complete submersion in. And um, it has been described in, in some ways like a piece of cloth in a vat of dye. And that cloth is just submersed and, should we say, marinated in the dye until it is completely infused with the dye. And so, you and I, brothers and sisters, we have been infused, baptized, filled with uh, the, the tr third person of the Trinity. God, the Holy Spirit, has come to indwell us. And do you wonder why there's warfare? Okay. Try living a spirit-filled life. Try abiding in Jesus Christ and find what comes out of the woodwork. But here in Nehemiah set himself to, uh, and then he goes on, he says, Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and the confession of sins of the children of Israel, 
which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. Uh, you see the similarity here between uh, his prayer and uh, Isaiah, uh, that he saw the Lord high and lifted up. And when you get that kind of sight of God juxtaposed to our frailty, the only thing that Isaiah could do is say, woe is me, I am undone. And uh, you hear that in uh, Nehemiah's prayer here, we have nothing uh, to, to, to give God, to offer God but ourselves. I beseech you therefore but by the brethren of God, the, the proper response is that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. The whole thing, holy, acceptable, that'll, that, that God will take, acceptable to, to God. And here is the, the coup de grace, and it's your reasonable service. When somebody says, I don't want your money, I want your life. And so here we see an indication of the the, the power and the effectiveness of prayer, a spiritual weapon. And uh, we can go on about Daniel and we win, but we will. But suffice us to say, dear saints, we are in warfare. You are. I am. We are. And uh, there's against principalities and powers as spiritual wickedness in high places. Now must we pray, for lo, the very stars are gone. Brave Admiral, speak, what shall we say? If we sight naught but seas is dawn, you shall say at the break of day, sail on, sail on, sail on, and on. Well, I say, pray on, pray on, pray on, pray on. Thanks for listening, God. saints. We'll continue this. God bless you. Goodbye for now.